Now, before you say anything, I know you're going to say he's going to talk about mums not being that hardy. Yes, you're absolutely right. It's that time of year. We have a beautiful full day ahead of us. Now, these mums are grown to look nice as decorations. They're full, they've got amazing colours, but they're not great perennials. What I want to do is show you today some alternatives. But before I do that, I've got a couple of mums that are great perennials. In this hand is Clara Curtis. This is Mio Kio. There are others like Sheffield that will spread and fill up a large area of your yard. Okay, let's not beat around the bush. Let's get busy and show you some of the alternatives to hardy mums. Well, let's start by looking at these panicle hydrangeas. They're changing color beautifully now. And have a look at this swath of color. Sometimes you'll have the white and you'll have the pink and red. Now, over the recent years, they've actually bred some wonderful new ones and particularly the ones that change color, like this one here. It's not a full flower, it's what they call, it's got sterile flowers on it, the things that don't open up, but very, very pretty looking. The top will be white and the bottom gets redder and redder or pinker and pinker as you go down. Now, Pinky Winky I like a lot because the leaf has a little dark hue to it. And right next door, we've got Limelight, which is a classic. We'll develop a lighter pink. And in the foreground, we've got, I think, Little Lime, one of the smaller ones. The choice is yours. Wherever you want to cut them, uh, they will flower maybe two feet above that. So if you cut them at two feet, they will flower at four. If you cut them at one, they'd be flowering, uh, probably less flowers, but bigger flowers. Now, the secret of getting this kind of color this time of year is to watch out because in summertime, it can get too hot and the flowers like these just fizzle out a bit. So for summers like we had, we have that two week period where we got into the 80s and 90s. These went a little bit brown. I quickly cut them all off and the plant is able to reset flowers. And as you can see, we're in October. It looks pretty impressive. Well, this perennial is an absolute gem. It looks absolutely fabulous in spring. It has flowers like forget-me-nots, little sky blue flowers that hover all around. And then you think, oh, that's it. The flowers have gone, but no. During the summer, the leaves get better and better and better. I'm just gonna break one off. They develop a lovely variegation. Um, strong dark green with a silvery white variegation in the middle. And this one over here is even better. This is Alexander's Giant. And the leaf probably is two or three times the size. And I say this time of year, we're in October, those leaves look brilliant. And it's gonna come back every year, fill up the whole bed and give you a wonderful splash of color in the spring, but still look good and even better, I think, in the fall. Well, of course, it's time to mention asters. A lot of the asters are native plants uh, to our area. In fact, in all of the Northeast. The bees love them. They're a great source of pollen, nectar for those uh, important insects. Now, in my hand here, this is a new Belgian one. Now, they've been breeding these to give you plenty of flower, kind of, they're trying to make them look like a mum, which I think kind of uh, spoils them a little bit. They really have their own qualities. This one though, New England Aster, I mean, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I have to apologize. I just want to show the deer ravage New England Asters. So if you're planting them in deer country, you're not gonna see much of them left. The two I would highly recommend is this one next to me. They call them fragrant asters because the deer will leave them alone. The foliage has this kind of uh, spicy flavor to it the deer don't like, so they leave them alone. And the bees, as you see, still love it. This is October Skies, and the one behind me, I don't know if I'm blocking the view or not, is my favorite. And that is, of course, Raiden's favorite. This one at the back is sprawls. And from a distance, it's a wonderful plant. So mid-October, you got blue flowers and with grasses can look really spectacular. Well, here's a combination I think that works really well this time of year. This is a bush clover. Big, massive, aggressive perennial, probably four or five feet tall, but it weeps. It gets so heavy. Beautiful amethyst colors. This is a smaller variegated miscanthus. This one's called Rigoletto. And right behind it, we have this lovely white flowering Rose of Sharon. And this one is Diane. And I cut this back really quite a lot in the spring and that delays the flowering a little bit. For those of you who have uh, Rose of Sharon at home, you realize most of them have finished some weeks ago. This one, because I cut it back so severely, takes longer to get in the flowering mode. And as you can see now, there's still a lot of flowers to come. I think the frost will finally put an end to that though. So nice little combination there. On the other side, I've got this smaller combination I wanna show you. Well, here's a combination that I think works really, really well. This is an annual. This is a nasturtium, but uh, I don't know if you remember, a year ago, um, I collected the seeds. These are the seeds here. Collected them, overwintered them in a little uh, brown paper bag or an envelope, and put them in, usually after the frost has gone, just slip 
one or two seeds into the soil and look what happens. It's as easy as that. Uh, it's a, a nasturtium called Alaska, I think because it's got a little bit of white in the leaf. But it looks beautiful in this little combination. And here's a Japanese anemone, full anemone in full flower now. That looks gorgeous. And even this cerastrium has perked itself up. This has white flowers, snow in the summer they call it. But even now the, the new growth looks even whiter and with a little bit of moisture and looks really, really nice. That combination I'm very happy with. And uh, sometimes by chance it happens. Sometimes there's a trick you've worked out um, over the years. And talk about tricks, I've got something to show you. You know that old phrase they say, you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Well, that's not true. Let me go and find Lily and I'll show you this. Uh, if you know why fox terriers, why haired fox terriers, they're a little bit their own boss. And Lily's certainly been like that. And uh, performing tricks, well, she will do it if she gets her treat, but half the time she'll just give up. We could never get her to fetch and I don't know what happened over the last few days. Watch this, I've got a... <laughs> We've suddenly got a dog that loves to fetch. Good doggy, what a good girl. How about that? So there we go, we can teach an old dog a new trick. And the same really applies to your garden. You've done the same thing every year, you buy your mums and whatever. Try something new this spring. Get out there and buy some of those plants I suggested or some of those techniques and you can have a completely different full garden the best time of year. As always, if you've got any questions, I'm down here at Greystone Gardens and we'd love to see you. Take care.